Try to check the mics real quick. If you one, guys. two, three, four, check five. one. Yeah, Hello. Up the, check one. Nice. Check cool. two. Awesome. Well, let's uh, let's get officially going. We got the, the very funny Seaton Smith here. How you doing, man? What's up, man? How you how doing? All right. Man? Good. Got your John. Gentlemen. Yeah, John. Totally. <laughs> yep. Hey, how are you guys? Thank you guys for joining us. Seriously. How you doing? Yeah, it's cool. No problem. Yeah. So uh, let's get the ball rolling with uh, um, a question for you, man. I, I wanted to kind of address. I uh, saw your your uh, TED talk oh, thanks, uh, man. online, man, and it was it was interesting. It was cool. Um, about that though, like, what? Why did you go so into that detail, like, with the TED talk, like, talk? I mean, you could have chosen a lot of different topics. Why? Why that? Was that just something? Oh, I'm just obsessed with comedy. I don't think about anything else really except for that and pussy. So. <laughs> I didn't think they wanted to hear TED Talks on pussy, so. <laughs> did, the, did the TED Talk yield better, a better groupie than comedy does? You know, uh, yeah, actually. I, I mean, <laughs> it, when I got off stage, they, they talk to you like you're the shit. Like, when I get off stage at a comedy show, they're very like, hey, uh, you know, be more funny. But at TED Talks, <laughs> TED Talks are like, hey, tell me something smart. And it's just like you feel smart. It's very, it's the best form of masturbation, I think, yeah. uh, that's available. I love your TED Talk. Can you sign the back of my <laughs> master's degree? <laughs> <laughs> how did you get into that? Yeah, how did um, you come up Yeah, that's amazing. Like, I, I could barely get booked at clubs. <laughs> the TED Talk is amazing. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it was, uh, I was in D.C. And I just, you know, like, Washington, D.C. just has a, a bunch of different circle so if you're funny people just you know they like you it's a small town so you just end up bleeding and other shit well we need somebody funny here we need somebody funny there you're nice be funny and like so i, I did a bunch of shit i had no business doing <laughs> yeah it was did great did you ever find yourself getting asked to do something um comedically like but along like a political line you didn't agree with like you maybe found yourself in a situation where you're like uh oh what have i signed up for you know um no, not recently, but in the, in retrospect, I'm like, because I've done like police functions and fundraisers. Right. In retrospect, I'm like, fuck, like, and like I'm, I'm surprised I can get away with that shit now. Like, but then you know, now I'm like, I wonder what I do with that again. I probably would, because I don't hate them. I just hate, you know, <laughs> I hate the laws that allows them to shoot me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate them though. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I guess like what I was trying to go with was the topic itself that mm -hmm. you chose, which was working a white room in a black room, right? Yeah. And, and just. I mean, is that, like, for example, the, these shows, I mean, it's almost all, the demographic is all white guys, like white right. people here. Is that really something you really do cater the room to, or is it yeah. just... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like uh, when I was first started comedy, I thought it was very uh, marketplace. Like, all right, blacks want to hear this, whites want to hear this, but then I realized, no, it's a lot more nuanced. It's a lot more personal relationships between people. So the group mentality of every club every night it turns different. Sometimes they're just, you know, slightly more hood, even though they're white. Like I was in Providence, Rhode Island, and them motherfuckers, <laughs> them motherfuckers are very hood. They're blue collar. So, but, um, and then, you know, I go to Charleston, uh, what was it, Charlie Goodnights? That was like a shitload of black people there, but they were very all well off. And so I, you know, I was, I, you know, I had a lot more smarter material, but I don't know, you're not supposed to change yourself. It's supposed to be who you are and then just adapt. And sometimes just people just don't like you. <laughs> and you just got to accept that. And that was probably something I wasn't controlling. And I, you know, I did that talk talks when I was, what, 25, 26. So mm -hmm. I just didn't understand me. And I didn't understand that just some motherfuckers just going to hate you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was interesting to me because I'm not, I've only become a fan of comedy recently. So mm -hmm. to hear someone's nuanced perspective like that was really interesting. Like oh, I, thanks, man. And it really put that much thought into it. And then once I listened to the talk, I'm like, oh, there's a lot of shit going on. That you have to come comedy kind of, thing, yeah. like to, to draw a response from the crowd. Like it, you guys make it look so easy, but it's yeah. clearly not. And I didn't understand that really until you started talking about it. Oh, cool, so yeah. I think that's how, what it helped me understand. I'm not saying everybody thinks this way. I think there's some people who are in, in, instinctually just the most charismatic person in the room. Like Michael Che walks in the room, he's the most charismatic human being. Whatever he's talking about, you just want to listen. And you know, some motherfuckers like yeah. me that I stayed in my room a lot, so I'm not that charismatic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, not, I'm charismatic, but I'm not that uh, uh, social. So I have to think about things that are like an Asperger's person just to get it right. <laughs> so therefore, I don't know. It's kind of, but then I'm just not, yeah. I, these, shit, these thoughts are interesting to me, so that's why yeah. I said them. <laughs> That's um, cool, man. But uh, yeah, uh, I want to say something more articulate about it. But no, I think I literally said everything I thought I have on that on that TED Talks right there. Yeah. <laughs> I gave you everything. Yeah. What's the uh, <laughs> was the, te the TED Talk experience? Was it kind of culty? I've heard that it's kind of got like a culty vibe to it. Um, Did you get that vibe or no? Uh, I, slightly, but I've also worked a lot of conferences where people just talk, and so I'm I'm used, used to that to vibe. Yeah. I'm used to just I'm, it just weirds me out that people would just sit there in silence and listen to a person, mm -hmm. uh, but talks about something intellectual. Like I find that the most. 
I get antsy thinking about what? What? You're not gonna go have a drink of coffee or touch right. like you know? Just gonna sit there? Um, but uh, uh, I dig it. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, I dig it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, they're really popular now. Yeah. Like then there's some up. shit like David Burns' uh, TED Talks. I was telling um, John about this shit. It was like he was talking about how the evolution of music and how it um, was com com uh, direct correlation to the venues that the music was played in because mm -hmm. you change your music right. versus the venue, right. which I realized was like literally the parallel of what my TED Talks was, which is like changing, changing, the, vibe. changing the vibe versus crowds. And like, you know, it's, yeah, I don't know. That, it, 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 that's what I think TED Talks is about. It's just like you say something and you realize there's so many different parallels. Mm -hmm. You go, oh, okay, I'm not by myself. Like right. there was another one about kind of the evolution of commercials and the evolution. I don't know. It's just like, I like this yeah. kind of shit. So yeah, I don't know if I can call them culty because I dig them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I dig them too much because there's so many out there. You could just fall into a rabbit hole of TED Talks. I mean, yeah, it's really cool, days. but yeah, you're, you're just like, wow, there's so much shit out there. So many smart people willing to talk about it. Yeah, it makes and dates really good if the woman's willing to talk about it. <laughs> but then, you know, really they just want to be flirted with and, yeah. and then fucked. Uh, I respect women. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a girl, brother. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, is this your first time out here? Second. Second, Actually, yeah, yeah, you came through. What, what other? I the, within the fourth week, this club was open. I worked here. Who, who oh, you were with, um, with Mr. Colin, Colin Moulton. Moulton. Colin, yeah. yeah, Colin, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's man, great because he's like a super clean food eating Brazilian hiking and so yeah. yeah hiking dude and then I'm cool, not yeah. so <laughs> it was the complete opposite, the opposite. It was that's cool. awesome how'd you uh, how'd you guys get linked on this together just the this club just, whoever just, this is the universe working yeah, out but just, I know Seton just from doing spots in LA when when you were out there working oh you yeah. saw me before yeah, yeah. oh shit <laughs> I didn't know that which yeah, where'd you see me at West Side Comedy Theater Oh, good. I had good shows there. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> Got worried about that. Yeah, I was like, fuck, what you see? You didn't see me at dot, 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 did you? Cause LA is so hit or miss, though. You never yeah. know like what, what you're going to walk into. Yeah. Yeah. What part of LA are you in? Are you? Uh, I was in Koreatown. Now I'm in Culver City. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, Culver City's some... dope. Yeah. yeah From what, I've only been through it like one time. Mm. So. I know the Blind Barber shows there. Yes. Yeah, that's a dope very, show. Very, very, very cool. That is a cool place. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, used to, I was out there for a little bit, too. So, yeah, that's why. That's cool. Yeah, it's so Culver, huh? Wow. What about um, Claremont? Have you ever hit through Claremont at all? No. Where's that? Um, north of Pasadena or right next to Pasadena, oh, no, actually. Those are hillbillies out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in California, those are townie <laughs> people. Those are, those are people with really they good got, jobs they, and sensibilities. That's where the Ice House is, right? Pasadena? That's great. Yeah. And yeah. if you just go to the Ice House, Pasadena is really cool. Yeah. But that's it. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't vibe with that. Yeah, yeah, I found that I, I I've chose the wrong neighborhood when I moved there. I live in Silver Lake, and I oh, I wow. wanted to live with hipsters. I thought it'd be cool, but I, I don't <laughs> I don't talk to enough people, so it don't matter. <laughs> so I wish I lived in like fucking yeah. Santa Monica or yeah, Venice because yeah. I was uh, doing trapeze classes out there, what? and that shit's awesome. Trapeze. Really? You want? Yeah, trapeze on the beach, that, on the fucking harbor. There's, there's nothing cooler than like fucking flying in the air and all you yeah. see is like sky what, and water. How'd you and, get into that? Like, um, I was writing for this online magazine in DC, and I and they would like they had me do like Hunter S. Thompson shit where I just could submerge nice. myself. And so I did like a That's trapeze so awesome. lesson back then, and then I've always wanted to do it again. Is and it's it over the net or is it over the ocean? Wow. Oh, it's over the net. Okay. Yeah, over the net. It's like it's on the it's on the it's on the what do you call that shit? Docks. Uh, yeah. Pier. Yeah, pier. Pier. Yeah. And then it's on. And then it's on a net under over the pier, and then all you you're like pretty much on the edge, and all you do is like, you just fly. It's fucking awesome, that's, yo. That's it's nice. so like you just kind of when you even when you're standing up there like waiting for shit the pole to come to you, you're just like, oh, this is pleasant <laughs> as fuck. That's so awesome. <laughs> that's what LA's about, man. Finding yeah. pleasant things to do because the insecurity that of living there overwhelms you to the point where you got to find something. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes people have to can't do drugs because <laughs> the long term of drugs is not. <laughs> we figured it out in the last 50 years. The long-term drugs are not good. <laughs> that's why niggas are fucking, that's why Gwyneth Paltrow steams her vagina and fucking uh, <laughs> other people like submerge themselves in water because it's shit just fun. Everybody in LA has a favorite hiking route because that fucking place drives you crazy. <laughs> Everybody's looking to yeah. escape, nigga. Uh, yeah. <laughs> am I crazy on that, John? Or no, I mean, like, I'm, but I'm super pro-drug, so I think there's another way to yeah. be happy about LA. It's, uh, I've, I've found that uh, cannabis and meditation, I can love anywhere I'm at at all times. There you go. That is true. There that you is go. true. And then, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like you in the fact where I will just house myself up in my apartment and never leave because there's just work to do. And if I yeah. go out and leave, then I'll be distracted. Right. You know? yeah. How does it compare to New York? I mean, from, I mean, the total polar opposites aren't they or i mean i mean for comedy wise it's not as fun la because it's like it's not the community 
Well, no, it's just not. That's not that many spots. And like oh. LA is a lot more showcasey. LA, you do spots to get a TV show, get into movies, mm-hmm. be noticed. New York, you're doing spots to be funny. Mm-hmm. You know, like to just be funnier than the guy that was before you, and be funnier than the guy after you, and then like get off stage and you kind of like yeah. pull your dicks out and, and just kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and just like, well, that was your set, nigga. Uh, how funny were you? And it's just like it's a fun community. And somebody's like, well, you were funny, but try this line. And then yeah. I don't know. Like I just passed the comedy set on the last year, and I've done so many spots. Hold on. <coughs> There's so many spots there. Yeah, I just and all my friends are there, and it's just it's it's like Nori Davis. I don't know if you know him. He's very very he's gotten very funny, and he's uh I literally every time he, every time he gets off stage, I'm like we're sitting down and going like comparing notes. It's it's and yeah, L. A. didn't really have that vibe because everybody's doing something bigger than stand up. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. you know yeah, yeah. sort of kind of uh, hear he, he, the same sentiment about it's just a work town. You guys just very much so. Yeah, yeah, everyone's just there to work on their craft. And, uh, yeah, there's, and there's, maybe there's more a, community. a community feeling yeah. about it. It's, it, it's it, my my perception is that someone's more willing to give you a line to help you out because you're going to get funny. Ultimately, you're going to make the show funnier. Everybody gets better. It's a Whereas win-win. if you did in LA, you're just giving your job away to somebody else. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, there's yeah. no real mm. jobs in New York like that. Like people get shit, but they get flown out. But like, yeah, how do I say this? Yeah, no, no. In, LA, in New York, the competition is not that hard. Like. If somebody gets, if my friend gets into a club, that means I can get into the club. Yeah. Versus <laughs> LA, it's like somebody gets famous, you're like, oh, I hope he talks to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, interesting. Wow. Yeah, so, what do you prefer then, New York? It sounds like New York. It's right a- now, um, as I'm, uh, I, people don't know me very well, stand up wise. So, I need to. I think if you want to so. get, what's the word? If you want to be respected in comedy, I think you have to conquer New York to an extent. In my opinion, I feel mm-hmm. like there's some people who have done that in LA. But I think you have to be in L.A. for a while to do that. And I feel like I'm before Mulaney uh, premiered, I was getting momentum in that way. And I feel like within the year, maybe some people will start to see. Once I come up with a special in the CD, yeah, people yeah. will be like, oh, OK. Well, who's <laughs> made it from L.A.? Who, who are the big L.A. comics? Who would you say? I mean, I feel like Pete Holmes wasn't famous before he left New York. Did Was he? And then he went to L.A. and, and Super Big? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, it's I, I, logistic stuff is. like that. You don't know Pete Holmes? No. Oh, Pete. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm a comedy infant. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. All right. I um, just kind of got into it when I started working here. Well, then, uh, well, then I don't know. It, it, it's not as cut and dry as I'm making it out to be. You can go to LA and you can get famous doing stand up. It's just you got to be more of a finished product. You got to be really like polished and ready. Yeah, I mean, more or less like if somebody calls you tomorrow to do the Tonight Show and you mm-hmm. go there, you kill like that kind of yeah. level of like, or just I don't know, acting wise. But, I mean, how many motherfucking stand-ups are really that great to demand a crowd in the country right now? I mean, there's some people who could kill you for 15 minutes, but mm-hmm. not a lot of motherfuckers can kill you for an hour. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. that there, are famous. there's people around the country who will murder harder than you've ever seen somebody murder, and you'll never find out who they are. Yeah, because yeah. they realize uh, fame's not that great. I realize that now. Like, I didn't, at 33, I'm really understanding. At 25, I was like, everybody needs to be famous. And now at 33, yeah. I'm like, no, there's... You could be rich and anonymous, and it seems like a really good life. Right. Yeah. Uh. I, I, I found out because you, you find that when you get into that career driver, and then that's where, the, that's where that, I don't know, where the anxiety of the business comes in. You're like, oh, why am I not getting these things? And you could get, they could, a city could pull your career from you. If you almost, if I had to sit back and go, well, why am I really, why did I want to be funny from the beginning? Mm-hmm. And as long as I stay in that mentality and I stay emotionally connected to what I'm working on at the infancy when I first started to try to be funny, then that, that's all that matters to me. And the fame and everything, all the levels are going to come in the time that they're supposed to come. Yeah. So as you're long not, as I stay focused on what funny is to me right. and that attachment, then that's really all there is. Yeah. That makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, where, where'd you start at? I started, I did like I did like a year of mics at the La Jolla Comedy Store okay. in San Diego, but it was Dallas, Texas where I, where I first really started. And you? Where DC. Did you start? DC. I started comedy in DC. DC. Yeah, DC for about seven and a half years. What, what, what got you kind of going? What was it just? Oh, I always wanted to. Always I wanted to start when I was 10, go? but then my father wouldn't let me. And then I wanted to start at 18, and then I, was, I kind of made an agreement to go to college. And then after about during year in college, 21, I was like, all right, fuck this shit. <laughs> and I just kept going. And then I went from there. <laughs> I still finished school, but I really could give you, a fuck uh, about what it. What did you study? Film? Film? Not even a real degree. I don't even know. I think yeah. you just go to college for film. The arts it was literally a waste either. of time. I was just like, I could have learned this shit in a book. One book. <laughs> a YouTube clip, no. One Barnes yeah. Noble trip. I would have learned. I would have wasted a hundred. I would have saved a hundred grand. Was that yeah. your agreement with your dad? Then I'll, do, yeah. I'll go to school, I'll go to but school, I'll get a shit degree. Yeah, my dad's a political science professor. He believes in college. He believes in school. So He's a practical yeah. guy. It's what you learn in college. Is what yeah. you, that's always that. 
that, the experience that, that of it. argument yeah. to the end of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have a philosophy degree, which is absolutely useless. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Where'd really? you, where'd you yeah. go to school at? Uh, Ohio Dominican University, which is in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. So what, was, what was your specialty? What philosophy. Was, no, I mean, what was, did you have a particular field in philosophy that you were akin to? Political philosophy, religious philosophy, but really I was there to play baseball for so, <laughs> so, I, was, <laughs> so I could get free college. Oh, that's fucking <laughs> so awesome. That was it. So, so that you was, were on a scholarship? Yeah, I was, on, I was on a scholarship, and then I haphazardly got a degree along the way because they just can't allow you to come in and be an athlete and learn something. <laughs> yeah, no. Bad. That's stupid ass <laughs> business of college. You really? need it us. seems like a lot of guys can get away with that, right? Sure. Yeah. And they're all, they all work at car dealerships. <laughs> you know, like it's, not a, it's not a good thing to Jesus. work out at. You know? <laughs> I knew I was, I was well aware when I, when I hit that school that my athletic career was over. So I was just riding it out going, well, give me this piece of paper and I'll, yeah. I'll go end up coaching at a college somewhere. And then I realized, no, that's not it. We'll yeah. do something better. Yeah. So. I like you. You're definitely yeah. you're adaptable to the moments. I like you. That's all we can be, right? <laughs> We're just water. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we're just water. <laughs> yes, we are. So then from D.C. to New York? D.C., New York, L.A. for a year and back in New York. Yeah. And yeah. the L.A. was just kind L.A. Of was, I mean, but also, I mean, I, my, my perspective on L.A. is really askew since I was doing a TV show when I was out there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. My perspective was uh, I was working, you know, 12 just hours a day. Anything. And then I would yeah. go try to go out after and do stand-up, which was not very uh, conducive because I was always tired yeah. and, and, and uh, there's always this new stress and also I was going through the whole thing for comedy. 2014 was a, a evolving year for me and you know when you evolve you're like two steps behind. Yeah. You take two steps back to go like what one step back two step forward that's yeah. kind of what I was yeah, at. Yeah. I was one step back last year. <laughs> what was the thing you learned in LA that surprised you? Since your career was in a state of flux. Well, my career wasn't a safe flux, just well, my, my art was. Art I was, was in a TV show. I was doing great. Yeah, that's a uh, <laughs> career. Like, I, I only mean art. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, no, I have to separate the two. Because okay. if, if you link them, you're going to be fucking sad, in my opinion. Because uh, <laughs> uh, that's the only thing that makes me happy is the art, is uh, the career. So the, what did I learn in L.A.? That it's really pretty for about three months, and then it becomes very boring. Right. Like, it's not a – like, L.A., to me, I don't want to say it's soulless. It's just not superficial. Or? I don't know. Superficial is too easy of a word. It 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 goes back. You know what? It, it looks very beautiful, but that insecurity is like a darkness. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like uh, whatever those typical movies where you go to a town and you think everything's good, and then you discover that there's some dark some shit. Weird you know, they have shit, to actually yeah. like murder a baby a year to keep the place going. <laughs> you know, that's the lottery. <laughs> that's what I felt like in LA. I was just like, oh man, this is this is not as pretty. Because you meet motherfuckers that like are were nice to me. Back in New York, or and I, one dude in D.C. He was a fucking goddamn sweetheart, and then I saw him at a club, and he was completely like, just like changed. the insecurity changes you, where you're just like, yeah. well, what the fuck, you, why, you, you can't go take my shit, or like I can't be around <laughs> anybody like you, or like I remember I had a wow. bad set, and the dude yeah. just would not talk to me, and I was like, I'm on a TV show, you should, I'm, you can't disassociate from me, like yeah. normally like open mics, if some niggas not funny, we just kind of like fuck you, like I don't want to be around somebody not funny, but. Mm -hmm. You know I'm funny. I've helped you get on stages, nigga. Like, what the fuck? You? I had one bad set because I'm fucking going through a thing and you just acting like a little bitch. Fuck you, nigga. Uh, there, is a, there, is a strange, there is a strange psychology about being in a new town and no one will make eye contact with you when you yeah. show up to a place. Like, you're not even there. Well, you're, you're constantly on man. there. You oh, have to ugly. be on. You're pitching. You're always a salesman out there. I mean, or that, that's the vibe I got when it's I was It's not out there. pitching so much as uh, in order to get in, every job. And Okay, this is, the, this is what insecurity is, right? Uh... To be secure as a human being, you have to have love of people and you have to have, you know, job security or money security. Those two things in L.A. don't exist because job security, every job is temporary. No matter it's like one season, eight season, 12, you're waiting for it to end. And you never really know until around February or April if your show's going to be on the next year. <laughs> and then... Um, in order to get the next job, you got to be nice to everybody because mm -hmm. everybody's going to get a TV show. So if you think about that, though, they're being nice everybody's to you being, so yeah. you can have a job. And, they're be, and you're being nice to them for a job. So you know that every relationship is shallow mm -hmm. and every job is insecure. So therefore, there's no reason to be secure in L.A. <laughs> Because wow. <laughs> you nailed it. Uh, yeah. So pack up everything sense. you own and move now. <laughs> get out. No, I'm not, but you no, deal no. with it because you get right. a lot of money. It's right. a, it's a fucking yeah. price. You don't get money for free. You got to yeah. do some shit. You got to go through some hell. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the fuck it is. You know, yeah. you don't get gold just by fucking waking up. You gotta fucking go to that desert and fight them demons. <laughs> yeah, when you guys so, were talking yesterday about the, uh, the the craft services and being involved in the movies or even extra, just the amount of stuff they have available to you. It's like, yeah, people will put up with. All the shit you just talked about for that, mm. just to just be around to be and, just, and and to get the big checks, there. just for all of that, and that's weird to me. I guess it's not weird. It's it's it's. I mean, what job is that gives you millions is sweet and good. Yeah, give me uh, one of those. Give me that job. To, you yeah. went through a whole rant about 
the dark side of that whole thing, and then it's like, eh, yeah, but it's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, uh, <laughs> what? I mean, if you if play baseball, he played baseball. He right. fucking will, you give him a second to talk about a particular game back in the day, you sure, bitch man. like a motherfucker. The coaches yeah. treat you like shit. You're yeah. fucking, the, 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 the fucking pitcher's cheating. Yeah. You got to go through all this bullshit, oh, but the, fuck yeah, it. Yeah. You going to play the game? Or but, go home and fucking yeah. beat off? Game, <laughs> when, when the game was taken away, when, 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 the game lo- when you lose the game and you can no longer play, mm-hmm. You look back and go, I would have done anything to stay in there. I would have done yeah. every steroid available. I would have kissed every ass mm-hmm. available. But in the moment, you're like, no, no, I'm going to be real. Yeah. And then the game passes you by, and you're like, oh, oh I shit, guess it's real over. Wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, so that's the, that's the industry sometimes yeah. that you know to to be uh, yeah reality will, will they'll work that against you. Yeah, yeah it's not even it it's like the human condition. We just got to work with motherfuckers. We just got to like the, it's like even big sense. So the Iran the Iran talks. So it's like negotiation with the U.S. on Iran. Like, of course you don't want to fucking give them open sanctions so they can be evil, but you got to work with them. What, are we going to kill yeah. those people? No, we got to fucking... <laughs> I said give them all the nuclear weapons they want. Go for it. Have them all. In fact, every country should have as many as we have. And why do you believe that? Because I think human beings are human beings, and the lines in the sand and all of our ideas are just illusions. Yeah, I disagree. I think there's some crazy motherfuckers <laughs> that don't give a fuck about living and will blow us up in a second. <laughs> I got to disagree. <laughs> I got to break precedent on that comment. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Well, that's why I wanted to kind of pull that out of you, because I think a lot of people don't consider that just or don't. Maybe someone like you doesn't talk about it in that way where it's like you just have to fucking deal with it. If you want to do it, you just have to deal with it. Yeah. Because a lot of people I hear guys around here talk about, I don't want to go to L.A. because it's blah, blah, blah. There's a million excuses, but no one really just acquiesces to the fact that you're going to have to fucking deal with all that shit. If you want to you want to work your way up, yeah, if you want to be successful. It's a maturity thing. I find most of the people that bitch are either in their 20s or 40-year-olds who have not grown out of their 20s. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like it's like love. Like you understand that if you take a woman and you fall in love with that woman, there's going to be pain later. There's going to be a lot of pain. So mm-hmm. you just got to just take it. Like, I'm going to be in love right now and be happy, but I know there's pain coming, but I'm going to accept that. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know that's, that's an immature thing, like immature thought to be like, oh, I'm just going to be in love. I know she's never going to do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Why would you even wake up with that perspective? Yeah. You're gonna f- it's a failure thought. What, um, how long have you guys been doing the Phoenix uh, circuits? Is this your I, just started, I just got called from out New York to come oh, really? do this six was, days. So this six is your shows. first, this is the first time. It's my first here? time working in Phoenix. Yeah. Oh wow! What do you think so far? What do you think of the scene? I, have you even been able to? I haven't gauge it yet. I've been in that condo, and, and then I did a radio show, and then I came here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> I just know the people that have come here are all rich, and uh, <laughs> yeah, but they're I dope, though. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I don't mind old people because there's this weird rule also where it's like if you're political. You can be dirty as long as you're political and smart. I just, it's weird with old people. Like, I can say Bush, I could say fuck Bush, and he can suck on pussy. And they go, yeah, you know, that's a good point. As opposed to be like, I was sucking on pussy last time. Oh, that's gross. But yeah. <laughs> like, like <laughs> it's a weird rule. But you can be, as long as you're political, you can be as dirty as you want. Yeah. That's and that's, and then, so they fuck with me. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And then, I don't know. I found a good groove lately. Cool. What about you, John? What do you think so far about the scene out here? Oh, I mean, this this scene is, I don't know. I've, I've, I've been on this path for the last year where everywhere I go, I try to find the, the great stuff in it. Yeah. And just say, like, maintain my focus right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, I, you know, every every audience has been a little different, you know? Yeah. As far as it's just finding, it's finding, like, the real reason why they're there and then the real reason why I'm here. And then what does that have in common? And then just ride that wave. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm a musician, so I kind of look at the, I don't know. The whole thing is just a, I don't know. What's the best way to what's what's the best way to think of? This is all just one living thing. I mm-hmm. guess that's the that's the best way that I that I look at it. Where this where the you are the room and they are you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And try to keep it like that's pretty zen. That's something like David Carradine and smoke weed shit. But I mean, it, it makes the most sense to me. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. What's well, well, objective, uh, right? It's like super objective, like. We're all in this kind of together, and so we should all be on the same team. Sure. should I mean, like, well, purge yourself of negativity. Everybody, you don't know why everybody's here. They're here mm-hmm. because they got dragged here. They're here because they bought tickets two months ago, and this is the greatest thing they're ever going to do in their whole entire lives. Right. Well, for me, like, I, I kind of see what you're saying. Like, I realized uh, my girlfriend really made me grow up a lot of it, so I have another analogy. I realized, like, a lot of relationships, uh, you argue. When you argue, you're trying to be right. That means... Fuck, let me start that over. That's going to sound confusing. I realize a lot of things, <laughs> it's about us as opposed to being about me or being about you. It's about us. So, like, so like me and my girl have a fight. 
it's never about like me winning. It's about us and making sure the problem just goes away. Mm -hmm. Or and I think about that a lot, like hecklers. You know, like a lot of times people hate hecklers because you think, oh, he's interrupting me and what the fuck I'm saying. Right. And that's not really what they're doing. Sometimes they just, you're creating a ball of fun that's kind of hanging about over everybody and just with your words. Involved. And they just want to throw yeah. at the fun. Right. They're not, it has nothing to do with you. It's a fun that's been created from the relationship. And a lot of, sometimes in my younger days, I used to be mad. What the fuck are you interrupting my dick joke for? I yeah. they're like, no, wait, no. They're, they're, they're in, and I listened to the tapes. So I'm like, no, they were, they were happy. Yeah. <laughs> they, were, they were sending you love. And why did you, and you, and out of your stupid fear, you just rejected them. And it was, uh, so shit like that, you gotta learn. <laughs> I mean, but I, I, I've heckled every teacher I've ever had as a student. <laughs> yeah. So how Jesus, am I any yeah. different than an then, audience member that feels compelled to yell something out? Yeah. And I think that's just about being new when you're new to stand up and, and you, you are on your guard. Someone's taking this stage from you. Right. And then you get to a point and you realize, like, this is just, this is no different than the floor. Yeah. 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 I like that. That's cool. Did, um, how, how it's often? It's got a very you... hopey kind of a podcast. Well, it's <laughs> very <laughs> yes. a podcast full of hope and, mm -hmm. and thoughts and it's darkness. It's good Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good Friday. So uh, tell me about your writing process. I mean, how much are you writing per day? I mean, how, are you disciplined like that? Uh, uh, yeah. you get up and just write or? Sadly, yeah. I don't know why. But like I'll <laughs> sadly, sadly, yeah, I really, I don't know. I, I got, I would like to go and live life more at one point. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what I do essentially is I think of something, and then uh, I'll ramble in my tape recorder, rehearse a lot, and then I get on stage and see if it has any legs, and then from there I'll go back. Like last night, you saw me. My last twenty minutes and thirty, I'm kind of weaving. There was like a chunk right before my last seven minutes where I was kind of weaving, like I don't know how to make this work. And so last from last night, I'll be able to like, okay, go home and work let's it. do it again, and then practice yeah. more. And it'll be by Sunday, it'll be perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, I noticed the uh, uh, you know you had the one la the guy Scott up front that you yeah. were really worked. I mean, is that was that part of that weave? It was just using him kind of as a as a. No, that was just a trick. That sometimes, <laughs> like when you don't have the material, sometimes you can uh, not when the material is not there. How do I fucking explain this? All right, hold on, hold on. Sorry. We could edit this my ums out, right? <laughs> the ums. All right. Comedy, I find that if it's like a comedy, there's, like, there's a certain bounce that you got to do. So you got to like throw an idea out there, let them kind of come to their own conclusions, and then fuck their conclusions up. It's called mm -hmm. opening set of punchline, right? So it's a bounce. Sometimes on your, you'll have more of an idea, but you won't have the bounce. So you just have a, something, something that's funny, but you don't know how to make it act, make it funny that mm -hmm. day. And I find that if you just make it into the moment and start talking to a crowd members. You can find the joke. You can find the moment of the joke, and it'll be funnier. So it's more of a it's in the moment as opposed to some convoluted thing. If it ceases to be presentational, it becomes very direct, and that's why I was talking to Scott. Yeah, <laughs> to make Using just the show organic. More. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Fuck, wow. Can we edit that out? That was a stupid ass thing I just said. <laughs> I was say, wow, that's some deep shit, man. No, like, I, we were thinking all that on stage as it's going on. Like this is, I'm, I'm kind of building this moment around this guy, Scott. That's yeah, really interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's like. Jokes are just tools to show your personality and your perspective and show you who you are. So sometimes you don't need jokes. You just need to just talk. Like I remember Jay Orkerson told me that shit. It was just like, you don't get on stage and do stand up just to become this prolific uh, person who says these great statements and change the world. No, you get on stage because you're funny. And the only way you know you're funny is because you talk to people and you yeah, bounce off them. Hey, where you from? You from where? Yeah. Oh shit, nigga. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then that's you, you are. And then you go from there. And then all of a sudden, then the, it gets complicated with these, like, well, what are you saying? How are you changing the world with these fucking jokes? How are you, <laughs> you know, how are you touching? Who are you revealing? And then that shit will fuck you up. And this friend of mine said this great quote, which was, whenever, and whenever you're trying to be a better, you forget how good you are. Mm. I just like that's that quote. Smart. Isn't that a great quote? I yeah. love that I like quote. That. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, look at it like if someone invited you to a party, you wouldn't just show up and do a 45 minute monologue right. to ingratiate yourself. Right. You're not there. just regurg regurgitating what exactly. you Exactly. So you, you have to be organic in, in yeah. what's happening. Be able to. You, you know? One thing I, I noticed also is like the snap. Is that part of just like, is that a tick that you have or is that like. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just I grew up doing that, and then I, I. It's all well. I think it adds to the performance because it it really engages the crowd to be like, man, this guy's like, it, it's these bursts of energy like that you have, like it's it calms down, and then you, you're right back into it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, to me, that was what was interesting about seeing the show. It was just like, damn, man, like what's coming up next? So, like it kept me engaged all the time for oh, that reason. Oh, thanks, man. I yeah, appreciate well, you saying that. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I just was wondering if that was just something you developed over time. The yeah. The snap thing. Yeah, there's a, there's a, um, are you a comic? I don't, am I in this shit? Yeah. Say it makes sense? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've done some comedy in my... I find that uh, there's layers to comedy. So there's just, sometimes you would just think about the punchline, but this, that's, punchline is just one layer of a cake. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you want to layer it with like sound, physicality, attitude, 
um, and all stuff like that. So like me saying, like I have a one punchline where I'm like, because uh, um, I do drugs. I mean, it's like one of the, it's a punchline. So it's supposed to be saying, you know, because I do drugs, that'd be one layer. But then if I do a snap, I do drugs. Now it's all of a sudden it's a new attitude. Mm -hmm. And then I'll move like, and then I'll look at somebody specifically. So now it's not, it's, so now I'm looking at somebody funny, I'm snapping funny, it's in a rhythm funny, and now I'm saying these words that are funny, and then it just hits you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. that, and so it's like a layered yeah. laugh. So it hits you, you know. So that's all. I just that's, yeah. you just How'd make you come it to that thick. How did you develop that as a style? Did someone? I don't know. I've been doing it twelve years. Down that road. Doing it twelve years, you just play. When you, you experiment, kind of, you play, and you just analyze, and you go, "Oh, that's interesting." That kind of works. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I like that. It's an anchoring. It's a it's a it's a psychological um, piece because when you're when you're anchoring an idea. If you use a snap, a pounding of a mic stand, right. yeah. so what happens is you're 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 at, you're taking you're taking the state of an audience and you're you're taking their current state and then you're accessing it and then elevating it to the point of where they're laughing and then you do a thing like that, boom, and then it hits that anytime. So anytime you need to get them back to where that is, that right. same it engages thing them, brings yeah. them right back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? It's fun, and there there I've seen people all over the world do just the most. You watch guys on TV and they'll they'll even do like a big gesture and a point. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's really cool. It's a it's a just a ever it's just an elevated point of performance, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just it's like uh, yeah, it's like adding, you ever seen a silk screen? Like I had a little silk screen mm -hmm. to a show. It's yeah, I yeah. was watching Hedwig and the Angry Inch on Broadway. And that shit was awesome. They had this one part where it all you know all the band was playing and he was doing the song uh, the story of love and they brought a big scrim in front of them, but it was a see through scrim, so you could see them still playing. But mm -hmm. then they projected like this wonderful animation in front of them right. as they're playing, as she's, as you know, Hedwig is jumping around and so you know, he was just like, you know, this yeah. great song, great performance, great, like, uh, it, like that's, that's, I don't Visuals. know, that makes great art. That's amazing, yeah, yeah because, yeah. <laughs> because when, you, when you leave a performance like that and you're talking to your friends, like, what'd you do? Like, oh, I said Hedwig last night, how was it? Man, it's they were, and then you even try to explain what was happening and you can't even, because right. what was presented to you was so mm -hmm. huge, mm -hmm. you end up just saying, you would just have to go see it. Right, yeah. yeah. And, then, and <laughs> like, you convey that message so much that guess what? The, seat, the seats will be filled. Yeah, yeah, well, man. Arts layers. <laughs> well, <it's crazy. laughs> yeah. You being a musician, overload. you being a musician, like I, I play music, music too. And um, I mean, do you think it has to be visual now for it to be as engaging? Do you think we've culturally gotten to a point where it has to because we're always, you know, doing this visually stimulated that it needs to be? Culturally, I see, I see that we're we're our attention spans are devolving to where a lot of comedy on the internet is just one static picture and six lines of text mm -hmm. is now what's serving as comedy. And so now it's like you're asking people to come here and pay attention for, for 90 minutes, yeah. which is very hard because we're not paying attention to anything for 90 minutes at all during the day, especially our own lives. Mm -hmm. You know, from I mean, I know from, from me as a, as a guitar player, when I'm writing music, I'll have like, okay, th this riff, and I'll just play it, play it, play it. The mm -hmm. next riff will come in. That co Okay, that's fine. Those two I'll probably play for a half a day. I'll have a third idea. Does that morph together yet? And it's like I find out when I'm writing new material, it's like, and even when I'm like building stuff on stage, it's like, okay, well, that riff worked. That riff worked. This riff works. I'm mm -hmm. going to put in the new thing that I wrote today. Oh, well, now that song sucks. Yeah. I better go back to the drawing board. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah and I guess exactly. that's why. You yeah. go yeah. too far. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's, that's, yeah. that's what happened to me last night. I, there was like a bit that I changed around so much it went too far. And I'm like, I lost Just God lost damn it. it. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me clean this mess up. But in the but in the lose, I don't know. I have I have fun when I lose them, and I know that I've lost. <laughs> and I'm the one who's done it. And I'm yeah. like, well, oh, shit. I better bail out this lifeboat because <laughs> we're all going to sink. You know? That's a beautiful perspective. Yeah. I'll probably just start keeping that. Up. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that. I'm like, I lost you, but fuck it, we'll get you back. Well, that's why I'm wondering, like, if the, like doing something like the snap or the visual aspect just grinds or brings it back in. It just kind of layers it back in. So I don't know. Like, just visually, I think we've just become kind of. Well, yeah. You also have to understand that from a from a representational standpoint of how people take in their information. Some mm -hmm. people only only bring in comedy. They when they hear funny things. They'll hear something funny before they're going to see something funny. There are people in the audience that won't listen to something smart, but if you do a crazy act out, that's the best thing they'll see all day. Yeah. And then you might, yeah. you might get into something that has an emotional attachment that the, that the people who are hearing based and visual are going to tune out on, but the folks sitting in there who are feeling the comedy, they're going to be with you 100%. Yeah. And so what's happening is you kind of have to weave those three layers of everything to get into everybody. Because yeah. mm -hmm. everybody's really taking in this. This whole app. Yeah, the yeah whole absolutely. Thing. Yeah. But huh. I mean, it really, I mean, it's just, you just have to be, it's that awareness of what's going on that very moment when it's happening. 
Yeah, the awareness thing. Yeah, yeah, and to be so aware and, and to be so present in it that they understand that, oh, well, okay, there's something going on here that's that's different than mm -hmm. what my normal life is, yeah. which would cause you to pay attention. If you're just driving down the freeway and traffic sucks, well, then you're going to get lost in the song. But if you're driving down the freeway and there's 17 cars on fire, you're going to pay attention to why mm -hmm. the cars are on fire. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's just the difference. Yeah, gotcha. So that's, that's everything, you know? It's all about awareness and paying attention. Yeah. For me. Yeah, well, they're here the already. The beer helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, why we serve alcohol. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, uh, but they did half the job by just showing up. So you know they're ready to be engaged. Now the trick is to just keep everyone's attention because everyone's a little bit different. That's right? only applicable about 90% of the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just because they're here don't mean they want to be engaged. It's not, yeah, just because you're here, there's a lot of reasons they're not here. I mean, they can get here and actually want to play. First off, they can get here as a boyfriend and don't want to be here. I would have watched yeah. the game. Mm -hmm. um, or I'm like part of a party. I'm part of a bachelor party. I have no mm -hmm. interest in being mm -hmm. here. Or I do want to be here, but I fucking shit's more expensive than I fucking thought it would be. Yeah. I thought it was only going to be a fucking two for free and now I got to fucking spend how much for drinks? Man, yeah. fuck this show. And it's like, you got to deal with all that. <laughs> <laughs> Even in a hospital, there are people dying, people have saving lives, and then someone's got to clean all this stuff up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. everyone's there for a different reason. That's mm -hmm. true, yeah. I like, yeah, this has been a, I think, very more informative podcast. It's usually, uh, I don't know, this one has just been more well, educational. I like right. it. Like, well, no, I like it. Let's talk about my dick, yo. <laughs> <laughs> about time, shit. Yeah. <laughs> We've been, yeah, it's the elephant in the room, man. Let's, let's <laughs> talk about it now. <laughs> I haven't smoked weed today, so I've masturbated way more than I like to be proud of. Is that I gave up masturbation for Lent. Did you? Yeah. Really? Like what? 54 days, what? like, no jerking off right now. Oh, man, you're going to explode. I'm outside 54. of them. No, I'm like, and I'm outside of them because the, with that, like, so there's no need for internet pornography anymore. <laughs> so, like, literally, I'm outside of this matrix of life that I used to be involved with, and now I just have this different perspective on everything. Yeah. I'm just like, all right, let's well, is, uh, that sounds is, amazing. Has the thought process been clearer, or is it uh, like the Seinfeld game? Yeah, the like, Seinfeld. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. I don't know. I, I think that I think I've I've just turned my life into an experiment where just to see. yeah, because everything it's like you know it's like booze. If you have 17 beers, you're gonna have a different day than you had if you would have had none. Mm -hmm. So if you if you jerk off eight times in a day, you're gonna have a different day than if you jerked off none. <laughs> and if you don't mm -hmm. jerk off for a month, that month's gonna be different than the month you were jerking off eight times a day for 30 days. Because yeah. it's all it's all angry. like though that's the one thing I learned in this, in this process, like how much psychic energy that I put into finding that stimulus, stimulating myself, going out to find pussy or whatever's going yeah. on. And you realize like what a weight because I have nothing to show for it, right? You ever, you ever done your True. orgasm math? No. Like I orgasm. No, like, so you, like like let's say let's just use oh, round wow. numbers. David finds that fun. Let's say like you're 13 and you start jacking it, right? And you're like, "All right, so and so now I'm 43. So I got 30 years in the game, right? And so I'm like on a t I'm like two a days like a football player." Mm. Okay. So if you did that math plus Christmas vacations, having sex with women or whatever, I'm like 25, 30,000 orgasms with nothing to show for it. Peace of mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't think is you, right? That's it. Like, is that why we're all here? Yeah, that's, peace of mind. that's it. Oh, that's, that's awesome. It. That's it. So that's good. it. I've taken my nuclear missile and I set it yeah. on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Oh, that's proud. How of much would that? I don't know. There's a fact. I, just, uh, I mean, you're smoking weed though, so you can. I, 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 being a weed head, I know that you can. Oh, you can not think about beating off when you're. <laughs> Cause like my, my smoking weed makes me such a non-cheater. Like I love my girlfriend. So when I'm high, I don't I don't think about women. You know, it's great. Yeah. Have you like it, there's a there's the the, the chemical the, the chemical uh, it's um, uh, what is it anandine I believe it's what it's called. And so what what happens is the, the cannabis hits you. You your my, your body has all of these receptors and the can the cannabinoid like hit them and then it's a bliss chemical. Mm. And so basically what happened is when I I turned off the the sexual component of my life. Which is which is the cytosin? Which mm -hmm. That's that brain chemical, mm -hmm. and then you swap that one out for the bliss chemical that weed goes on. Now I get high and I just hike and look at trees, and I've never <laughs> and been just, happier. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Good God, man. It's trippy <laughs> shit. Don't that's fuck with your brain, dude. You can't get it back. Like, yeah. This shit's. How many wet me. dreams do you have? You gotta wake Could up. Do I haven't had one yet? Sperm? No, because I think I missed the boat because I'm too old. Wait, why do you think <laughs> your brain is broken? Oh, that's just a funny thing. Uh, no, no, damn no. it! <laughs> I, I want to know the details. I got to avoid some shit. <laughs> so, is uh, so marijuana is your your cope mechanism? Well, yeah, I used to be bad. Time. I'm not bad, but I was a good drinker. I'm yeah. solid at it. I can kill it. And then uh, I found that this is more productive. Yeah. <laughs> Weed's a lot more productive than liquor because I would drink every night, especially in New York. 
like there was a time where everybody was drinking and so yeah I was with, like, with four o'clock bars four a.m. bars so yeah. we all do shows every every bar gives us free drinks because we're so and then we we have subways so we all regularly drink till four maybe sometimes six I get up at like three and I just got shit, nothing done. I was just oh, rambling yes. angrily for yeah. two years. <laughs> and, and I was like, fuck. So the weed, for some reason, I could still write on mm. weed. I could still be a good Function, person. Yeah. I could just get shit done. And, yeah. and sometimes I'm actually thinking of better ways, but it's more, not even better, just different perspective on the same joke. And I was like, oh, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Cocaine, I think, would be like, you know, the, the dream, but you know, I don't have the money or the. No, I don't want to do that. fear that, 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 I would, that I would do blow and have the greatest set. So oh, the God, greatest that'd be the worst. Session in your life. And then you that's it. You're like, well, okay, that's fine. Yeah. I'm on that path forever. Yeah. I, was re I was reading this. I don't know if this uh, conversation was true or not, but I was reading the, you know, the new Biok movie with Pryor. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene with him and Red Fox, and they're doing cocaine off of a table. And. Uh, and I think like Red Fox was like, man, it's a shame that we keep we, that we keep thinking of ideas on cocaine because you know you just keep talking, you get the motor mouth, and you just record some of that shit, and all of a sudden you got a new hour. <laughs> and he never that, never that was our conversation. And then also it kind of ended up with like Pryor admitting that he's a junkie, or Red Fox accusing him of a junkie. But uh, also side note, Pryor that story of Pryor is interesting because he's portrayed as a guy that like had it all and then got messed up in some drugs and he lost it. But, yeah. That's not true. He was fucked up the whole time. <laughs> and that's like, I don't know, it's a weird misnomer where that's like people try to make this drug analogy of like, I think oh. it's a testament to how good of a performer he really was. Right. Yeah. That, that even that even flying as high as he was, he was still able to maintain and make the amazing art and movies that he made. Mm -hmm. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, up yeah. until he burned himself. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah that was a peak. <laughs> But he, uh, I mean, he recovered pretty well from that, though. Not uh, artistically. You don't think so? If you so? look at his stuff after 81. It just kind of, I mean, you think it I mean I'm a nerd of his, so I mean, like, after mm. 81, like, he just made garbage. Uh, <laughs> the mm. 70s is when he made brilliant shit. Mm. Even his worst movie in the 70s is better than anything he did in the 80s. Like, Which Way's mm. Up might be the worst, but it was fucking amazing compared to yeah. moving and... Uh, what the fuck else he making that shit? That uh, fucking Brewster's Millions, yes. um, fucking the toy, the toy. all that garbage. Mm -hmm. That was fucking just drug movies. But fucking <laughs> in the seventies when he was making the Richard Pryor show, when he was fucking making those specials, he was fucking perfect artist. When you, as a, as someone who stuttered, uh, studied Pryor as much as you did, can you can you listen to someone do stand up and know exactly like, oh, that dude loves Pryor? You can just tell the influence. You can hear it. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, you can watch it's like undeniable, right? yeah, you yeah. can watch like uh. What's his name? Um, I don't even remember. I'm not going to name names. I might get sound insulting. But yeah, you can hear like certain levels. That's a lot of black comics from the 80s. When you see him now, you be like, oh, oh, the way he does prior, the way he'll do, do, do the giggles. Uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they, you see like a lot of like, yeah. little elements. You're like, oh, okay. That's cool. I mean, he's the only person to me, like, you know, like, I don't like Bob Marley because there's so many cover bands of Bob Marley. I can't. Right. Like, whenever I hear Bob Marley, I think of that shitty cover band I was in that one bar that one time. Like, I just think of that. But, <laughs> but prior, uh, thank uh, God. <laughs> He hasn't been watered down for me, but Carlin has been ruined for me. Doug Stanhope, he hasn't been completely ruined for me, but there's so many Doug Stanhope wannabes. Bill right. Hicks has completely oh, been ruined. Yeah. I can't yeah. listen to Bill Hicks because of all the wannabes of Bill Hicks. So, yeah. But, there, I mean, those guys, I mean, have become so iconic for that reason, though, right? Just because everybody's just, they set such a standard, it's just like shit, man. Like, yeah, can yeah. anybody even, like, even come close to that anymore? I don't know, do you think... There are well, you gotta oh realize God, they yeah. haven't they haven't blazed paths. They've blazed eight lane super highways. Yeah. So it's it's really easy to, to watch exactly what they've done, and you could it doesn't can't fault people for taking a lazy path. To go yeah, just say hey. Because it's already yeah. been built it's out. It's right for there. You. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I think there will be. I don't know if there will be anybody as mythical because Garland and Pryor are myths now more than they are people, mm -hmm. right? Like they're mm -hmm. like they're like we wrote about their lives. Their lives are very archetypal. Like it would be great stories mm -hmm. right. in that they were they were lost. And then they found themselves from hard work, and then they had crazy success, and then they had to decide they had to change again. Mm -hmm. And then they, and, then, and so, and every comedian that starts sucks. So yeah. we see their stories and go, oh, I have a chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, prior to 12 years, mm -hmm. fucking quit and left. Like, like, I can't believe that. Like, if you think about that, I'm 12 years in comedy. I can't imagine just going, man, fuck this shit. I'm, I'm going to go to Berkeley and figure shit out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine that, but he did it. That's just so fucking, that's like a myth. You just want to follow that yeah. shit. Do you, I mean, do you think there was, uh, there's got to be a reason why he did it, though, right? I mean, like, to oh, yeah, find yeah. himself. I mean, so then are, is that something that you think about, like, leaving, leaving it? Oh, I think about it, yeah. I think about, like, leaving just to figure me out more. But that's kind of why I went to New York. That's my Berkeley in that, like, I could have stayed in L.A. and kept trying yeah. to find the next thing to do. But uh, I don't, 
think that's a productive way to try. Like, if you go, I don't like the actor's life. It's very like uh, walking around begging for somebody to give you a job. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. That seems very oh, yeah. sad, <laughs> you know, because then like you ever talk to an actor, they fucking they get into their heads about like they don't just show up and try to audition. No, it's like, well, what's he thinking? What's they're thinking? Well, you know, you can't go in looking too pretty because then you won't get the role. If you're too good, then sometimes they'll, they'll get bored with you. Yeah. Or sometimes you got to walk in, you got to walk at the right time. I get it at three o'clock. It's like it's very like. None, it's like right. listening to somebody uh, getting a lottery ticket. It's very, <laughs> it's just like, ugh. As opposed to my comedian friends who are very funny, like uh, Kevin Barnett and fucking Hannibal and um, a lot of comics who just go, I'm going to sit down. Melanie even, just they sit down, they write what they're going to do, and then they go do it. And then they, <laughs> and I, I think I like that life. Sure. Create yeah. your own shit. I like, I like, I had a, um, I did a, a stupid mattress commercial, and it was like, it involved a remote control. And I, and I did this thing in the room where like it, the last move was like this, the presenting of the remote control as like the thing. And I just had this. Like a super like quick jousty move and then when the commercial aired I didn't get it mm. and you're sitting there going oh, I didn't get this commercial oh and there's my hand move <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, so in that sense in that yeah. sense you may do something in the room that yeah. works you don't work yeah, but that works but and that now works. that plays and then you look at it and go well I didn't get the gig but guess what I'm in that ballpark yeah yeah, so, yeah. So that's that's all perspective thing, yeah you know yeah here's another oh speaking of that I remember one time I went to an audition for this show and I saw a comic friend of mine, and he was like, hey, you want to go through lines? And I was like, yeah, sure, fuck it. And so we went through lines. He did his version, and then I did my version, kind of like the little choices I made with the character. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, oh, that was good. Can we do it again? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, he just took elements of the shit I did. He did it for his character. And I was like, oh, shit. And then he went uh, in the audition before me. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> he took my ideas. I didn't know you could steal acting ideas. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> wow. So what happened in that situation? Did he oh, get good. it? He, no, he didn't get it. No, no I got no. it. I got it. <laughs> No, no, that wouldn't make sense. I got a screen test for it, but I, I chose, I, I didn't do it. I wish I did it, actually, but whatever. Yeah. whatever. But, uh, wow. Yeah, I have an acting friend that was telling me about the time he got a part on, on some show. He was overanalyzing it like that, too. He was like, fuck, I, I wore this. I wrote things down that I did the last time when I did. He was really deep into that craziness. I'm like, this is fucked up. And it just seems all like luck to me. You walk in, you do your thing. It's not all you? luck. It's not all luck. But it's also all not... It's not all skill either, but it's not all luck. It's, it's like it's a it's like a it's a sports term where you work so hard to get yourself lucky. You work hard yes, to mm -hmm. get lucky. Mm -hmm. That's play kind the of what odds. It is. Yeah. No, you don't play the odds. You um, put yourself in the position to succeed. In that, like, you figure out what you want and you get close to it. It's it's not just straight auditioning. It's a lot of conversations. A lot of being in the right comedic circles. It's getting a lot of love. It's. I wish it was a simple thing. I can't if I can't explain crowd work simple to you I definitely can't explain Hollywood yeah. simple to you but it's not luck like you look at Tom Cruise and Matt Damon those guys aren't lucky no, they, <laughs> so, work, they work their ass they work their ass off to get in the position to get the scripts they want they there's no real luck in Hollywood there's a manipulation of luck though awesome. that's good yeah that's interesting sense. yeah manipulation of luck well, it seems like what you're talking about is just hard work, and then you're yeah. so engrossed in the work and in what you're trying to do that eventually you'll find the success. And some of the guys that put in the most work, like the Tom Cruises, they rise to the very, very top. Maybe they're a little crazier than others, but it seems like they're putting in the most work. They've you learned say that's to be true? present inside of doing their work. I and argue. Be, oh, and, sorry, right? sorry, 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 sorry. Go. And then, and then, because they're present in their actual craft of what they're doing, then they go, okay, well, this is the connection to this. Then this is the connection to if I'm talking to you, mm -hmm. being able to audition. If right. I'm, if I'm whatever, showcasing for something, mm -hmm. or if I'm in a club, it's all the same. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Like keep it at like micro. You, know, you can literally look around and go, "There's a billion things I got to worry about," but really, the one thing you got to worry about is like, "Are you here right now? Right. Doing what you're supposed to be here right this Is second? it preparation mm -hmm. and opportunity kind of lining up at that point? I mean. Uh, that, but every that, single every single breath you take is an opportunity. Yeah. In everything. Yeah. I'm gonna go write a fortune. <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah. No, really. I was <laughs> this is this there. is really like Let's yeah. Think this, this through. Is, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, I think part of it too, the thing that I've noticed, especially with you two guys, is just even just personalities. I mean, you're just nice guys. I mean, the fact that you come in and just talk to two random fucking guys, it's just like. But th that is part of it though too, right? It's just being a fucking good person in the industry as well. Gives you some of that like Most credibility, of the right? Time. Most. Do you think it can? Do you think it can bite you in the ass nice too? The right people, probably. <laughs> do you think it can bite you in the ass too? Being like nice. being too nice, like d does it? I mean, if you're giving your bits out and, and people are well, like stealing you, it, I maybe. mean, but where people can you know use that against you is just walk on you, I guess. In some oh, there's sense. no way not to be used. 
that's just yeah. what you're going to be. You're going to yeah. be used. Just, yeah. Your goal is to not be used and not be paid for it. Right. But the, the job of acting is to be used. Your job is to go on set and you say somebody else's words, you wear somebody else's clothes, and you're told to stand somewhere else. You're being the definition of being used. That's mm -hmm. the job. <laughs> so you don't. That's that's something we do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. No. I just. It, it's an interesting thing, like this whole, like especially having somebody that's done the acting side of it as well. Um, would you go back towards that? I mean, oh yeah, I yeah. Liked it. I liked it a lot. No, yeah. It was very fun. You're gonna stay on top of that then, huh? Yeah, no, I'm gonna make my, I don't know, make my own stuff. Maybe we'll get another season, or maybe I'll make my own thing. I don't know. I, I love, I like acting. I like writing. I mean, watching Martin Short work will make you want to fucking work. Like he oh, just, yeah. he's so. He, I mean, 40 years of experience, he does a lot of things he doesn't even think about anymore, mm -hmm. but I mean, watching him rehearse on shit was just like, oh, this is, this is what, I didn't understand comedy as right. well as I did until I just saw it, like, oh, okay. So, nah, and I like growing and learning, so, nah, I like this shit. And what about music for you? I mean, that's all obviously been your other outlet then, right? Yeah, how, how's that, how has that influenced the comedy? I mean, it's, I, I find myself, um, I don't know. I was, I mean, I was always a front man. I was a guitar player in a lot of bands, bass player, but then the, most of the bands I sang, I was a front man. And so I, you learn in that essence, you know, how to move a crowd, mm -hmm. you know, and, and making somebody laugh is no different than getting to circle pit or stage dive or mm -hmm. whatever they're gonna do. So it's, I came from the 90s where everything was just about creating chaos and violence. And you're like, well, those still tricks still work. I just gotta turn them into laughs now. Yeah. It's the same stuff. So, but I'm That's still cool. writing music. And, yeah. You know, that's one of the components to that, that I keep in, you know. I have, like, an app on my phone where I make drum beats just for something to do. Just to have a different creative outlet that's different than let's write a then word, write in. let's yeah, do yeah. a bit, let's do that, you know. Yeah. It's How like, do you manage your time with music and comedy? It's whatever's, whatever I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing. That's hmm. it. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm not in a position right now where deadlines are a thing in my world. Mm-hmm. So it's, I have, there's a lot of open freedom for me to, to be able to slowly work on what I'm working on. And I could spend three hours playing guitar and in that come up with a bit that I would have never thought of had I been sitting there just meditating or just walking to Starbucks or doing whatever I'm doing. And so it's like the doing and something else that, you know, you're just, you know, all, all our thought patterns and everything are just those, just, it's just routine <coughs> patterns of doing the same things over and over and over and your thought process are getting ingrained. So your stand-up process always follows a certain way. We build our clown, but you do a different artistic thing. You know, you write some poetry, some lyrics. You write, um, you know, paint. Do something that's outside of your normal. Then that'll change. That'll change your, your approach to stand-up. Yeah, and the because all you're bringing branch. in different. Yeah, because you're bringing in, you're bringing in different, you're bringing in different stimulus, and then you're just creating for the sake of creating, not creating for the sake of creating with an output with a dollar uh, sign with an agenda with, a, with something yeah. to move up yeah yeah and so that for me from where i'm at in my path right now i'm like literally everything for me is about just that simplistic approach of mm -hmm. this is what i'm making right this second i like that yeah that's cool what about you do you have any other outlets besides the comedy and writing is nope. a, I, I just want to make movies and tv shows and so that's so i've been writing scripts and yeah. writing my act well, uh, it's, it seems like you write, read a lot though or quite a bit yeah do it sound like i read well I mean, yeah <laughs> the hunter s uh <laughs> you know brought up hunter s so. <laughs> uh yeah i read a lot but that's i don't know i don't really count that as anything it's just my mother just, and father are nerds saying. and they forced their nerd habit on me so yeah, i good. always have kind of a book on me yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, i don't know if that's factors in anything in my life just i like detective novels i like people being murdered and i like somebody being <laughs> <laughs> solving. <laughs> I enjoy that. I mean, from a, from a writer, they, they go, if you want to be a great writer, you'd be a great reader. Right. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a direct Just correlation. For me, if you want to be a good stand-up, be a great audience member. Learn to sit in a room and, and enjoy comedy at mm -hmm. all times. Then they can never take this away from you. Mm -hmm. you know? It's the same, same approach to music then as well same for you? Same approach to music, yeah, yeah absolutely. Just be a because fan before, first. Because before I learned how to play guitar, I taught myself to play guitar, I was in bands. I right. was a kid in my room with Just records. Yeah. And I'm like studying studying what the album art was and the lyrics and the liner notes mm -hmm. and who was in those little pictures and what's that band and being a sleuth and finding new things yeah you know that was the best history lesson i ever could have had yeah. was learning about punk rock and metal from all over the world yeah. and find out that no matter where everybody was from we all had the same experience yeah you know that's cool what about um well what's coming up for you guys uh I'm what's on the horizon hard, so torn hard i'm gonna be a sacramento punchline next week and then i'm gonna do eugene merman's I'm gonna do wait, hold on. I'm gonna do Eugene Merman's festival, but before that, I'm gonna do uh, open up for Mulaney in Indianapolis, Detroit, 
and then Edmonton. You're doing the other House of Comedy, yeah. I'm doing Edmonton, and then I'm going to do uh, fucking Minneapolis. Nice. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, busy for a while. On the road, man. I'm on the road. Bill may hopefully make a special this summer. We'll see. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a place where you're going to film nope. that? I have no idea. So. I just, I was trying to figure out what I have now. I just kind of figured out what I have. So now I'll, uh, I'll figure out what to do with it. Yeah. I'll probably have to shoot it in a liberal city. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, you know what? One of the most conservative cities. Actually, the them on their ear. I thought I was the only liberal act, but then I was sitting here in, in this Phoenix Republican town, and they're fucking, and I did Kentucky a couple weeks ago, and they fucking loved me. Me too, so I'm thinking, fuck it, maybe I'll do Middle America spot there just to go. see. Yeah, I'm, no, I was, I'm going to come Washington in a couple of weeks. Let me see what because I think Washington okay. State is as far as liberals go. I wish that's the peak. So mm. if I offend them, <laughs> right. then I'll definitely go Republican. <laughs> I'll definitely go conservative state because they're more looser. Liberals have turned very anal. Like yeah. Brooklyn, I would never do my special in Brooklyn, even though I've written a lot of my jokes in yeah. Brooklyn because. Yeah, they'll turn it off. Too PC for you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They'll, 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 you watch your glasses fog up right in front of you. No, they'll they went too far. Oh, yeah, they're the, they're the only, there's one club, it was one bar show that's really the best bar show in, this, in New York, but that's the only show where I, I've seen consistently, if the crowd finds you to be offensive, they'll heckle you. I've never mm. seen, like, like somebody like, that's racist. I don't like that. Like, <laughs> I've seen that. really. The only oh. place I've ever seen that happen, and it's hilarious. <laughs> Wow, that's uh, weird. Yeah, yeah you no. wouldn't expect that. that no, you don't expect that ever. Yeah. Like you expect somebody to be like, man, uh, like maybe if somebody's like, you know, if you're a soldier and you hear somebody talking shit about troops, obviously talk shit mm -hmm. and fuck you or yeah, but never. Actually, I, I don't like how you're talking about blacks right now. <laughs> <laughs> the whitest guy in the room. Yeah, no, yeah, usually as uh, there was one time, I don't even know. This is I don't know if I can tell. I don't know if I'm telling a story. Jimmy Carr, he's a hot comedian out of. At a UK, he came on stage with a clipboard full of jokes. He was just going through jokes on stage, back room, killing, killing, killing. And then he did one joke about transsexuals, and there was a transsexual in the front row standing. Uh, and he was like, "Oh, are, are you mad? I'm so sorry." She was like, "He was like, gee, I don't know how to say. Uh, I would say she, because he was looked like a she, so I'm going <laughs> she." Um, it was like, "I hear this shit all the time, so I got here on the street, and I got to hear it at a fucking comedy show. I'm just whatever, fuck." Whatever, and Jimmy just kept pressing. I'm really sorry. I, I'm really, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. And she's like, Yeah, whatever. Just okay. Just whatever. And then he immediately did another tranny joke. He was like, <laughs> 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 I found that so hilarious. <laughs> oh, he ripped. Oh, it destroyed the good. room. Sure. And then he did like, and then he did like five or six other jokes. And then he did one more tranny. And then he just got off the stage. It was like the coolest. <laughs> from a, from a boxing perspective, oh. to know that you're just doing this so they can move in closer yeah. and just like low their guard. And Bam. Just send oh. them against the wall. He just destroyed. <laughs> he knew that's the best that's part. Of it. Because he oh, made it clear, the bitch, this isn't about you. I'm right. fucking doing yeah. a series yeah. of jokes on a clipboard for yeah. a like I, I, I don't even, I didn't know you existed until yeah. a second ago, and now you're gonna make yourself known. Well, now I'm gonna shit on you a little bit more. <laughs> I like that. That was and just people, made... and, and people aren't offended in the moment. If you say something now in 2015 that someone is mad about, it's because they're accessing a time when they were disenfranchised, right. probably yeah. when they were in eighth grade. Yeah. And so what you're hearing now is the 2015 version of their eighth grade mad <laughs> just, self. Yeah. But you got to understand that. Well, every Everybody's in that in that position, you know. Mm -hmm. And if they're being, you know, obviously apologize up top, and if they press it, well, then it's open season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh -huh. the thing. He was just pressing, like, just like he didn't let it go. Like that's all. Right. He was just like he was like he was like I'm sorry. He was like whatever, whatever. And he, just, he made like a big a thing about it. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like the crowd was really not on that person's side. I can't believe <laughs> it was the most. I've never seen a crowd turn on a transsexual person. That was so <laughs> awesome. That was just. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be a real douchebag. Uh, funny is funny. Right? Yeah, that was hilarious. Even when I tell it like secondhand, it's yeah. fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's a great awesome. night. Oh, it was funny. That's good. Could have written that better. I'm no like tranny right up front. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. that moment you just the, the crowd and I think the proper term is transsexual. But uh, <laughs> that's right. I, I I'm the one that started the tranny joke. I just it's, it's a funnier word than. Uh, did another transsexual job. The rhythm of this story would have been off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shit like that. You got to think about that. <laughs> what about you, John? What's coming up for you? Right now, like, I, um, the, the, the kind of uh, work that I've been getting, the kind of stage time that I've been getting, uh, doesn't really lend itself to putting together an hour long anything anywhere. And so I've been kind of taking the band, like, when I was in, when I was in bands, it was like, you would put out a single, you put out a seven inch, you put out an EP, you pull out a full length, and you could just morph from one thing to another. Mm. And really, it was just about putting out content. Yeah. And so like, I just put out like two digital releases that both came in at like over 40 minutes and dropped them in the same week. And so it's just stuff that I've collected over like, the span of like a couple of years yeah. and hanging on to. 
And so moving forward, I'm just, you know, from a seven inch, like a seven inch is really just 14 minutes of material. So now I just need a place to just write, write, write it at 14, it. go record it, put it out, and let it live online, yeah. and then make the next thing. Whether if it's going to be a three minute piece, a five minute piece, or I get it, I get in front of a crowd and do 45, and yeah. it just happens to be something that hasn't been done yet. Yeah. You know? weird, I'm looking at it like that. Because if I, if I have to wait to get to the point where my career, where I'm allowed to have the stage time where you can craft a 40 an hour long special you can only do that because you're doing an hour every single night if i don't have that hour then i just gotta wait yeah so but that doesn't mean i can't put out content mm -hmm. and that's kind of where that's where i'm at right now that's cool yeah i don't know that it's right well now it, what it, you do you're doing you're using process. your options yeah yeah, yeah. It is, it's one of the many processes that you can use that's awesome yeah, yeah. we talk about that a lot about online content and people having the, the availability the, the you don't need too many skills now to put stuff out and so, but there's so much out. We talk about it being white noise, and the comics that come through talk, they disparage, I think, a lot of people that put content out online, musical, comedy, movies, whatever it is. But you have to, right? How do you, what do you guys feel about that? Like, the you have to moving. be a part Nobody, of it. Nobody's buying physical stuff. I mean, go to, find, find me a record store. Mm -hmm. All the national chains are gone mm -hmm. because people aren't buying physical products. For the most part, they're not doing it. And Unless so it's all okay. of the old games that are, that are around of putting out physical content and, and doing that, it's just not there anymore. Mm -hmm. People love live performance, and people love to never leave their house and be entertained. So I think you, gotta, <laughs> you yeah. have to have to the one make the other. Yeah. Yeah. It goes back to your point before. I don't, I don't think this big comedy's gotten very f visual yet uh, as far as stand-up comedy goes. It's, the things I do, and a lot of physical comedies do, is still not really shown perfectly well right. in comedy specials yet, except for very few exceptions. I would say like Live at the Purple Onion, I think it's a very, the mm -hmm. most perfect special, mm -hmm. the extension of mm -hmm. Zach Galvanakis. Um, but then you see a lot of motherfuckers that don't do, t think about it that level, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm putting out an art installation in July that's showcasing 15 minutes of comedy that I'm not even in. Hmm. So the music, the, the comedy is just coming out of an old timey radio, yeah. sitting on a table, and around the table are four not gender neutral figures with televisions as heads. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then that's and then those yeah. TVs are going to be running a movie in conjunction to what they're to hearing, and everyone yeah. has a different sensibility. Huh? Because why that's not? That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's. I ain't gonna lie. That art I'm installation doing. thing you just said just came out of the blue. I ain't gonna lie. Like what? What did you? Wait, you two. <laughs> We were talking about comedy a long time. You just, you just, you're talking like we were talking about art installation for an hour. And I'm like, what the fuck? What do you mean? You described the shit out of it, too. Yeah, I was just like, like, like we were like, oh, we're on board. What the I'm looking music. around like, y'all know? <laughs> Did y'all know the conversation going in that direction of art installation? <laughs> <laughs> you just said it, but, there. But you said it very casually, that's all. I, I mean, I just, I'm, 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 I'm just looking at it where, I mean, have, aren't we going to come to a point where, the, where a guy standing in front of a brick wall or a guy standing in front of a, a curtain or whatever, a multimedia display, what, I mean, even like a guy like David Huntsberger is putting out an album now and the video component that they're putting on it is all animation done from hundreds of artists. And so you're going to be hearing something when you're visually seeing a representation of something else, mm. which is going to completely change the way people are going to be ingesting that stand-up, which is different than to coming to see a live. That's why I was like, well, that's a cool idea. Yeah, stand-up needs to evolve. It's been around, what, maybe 100, maybe less than 90 years? Well, I mean, we've been telling stories since... The beginning, since but the, the, form, the form of what it is now can't sustain itself. What do you think it would evolve to? What's the next My step? My theory is that with this online content, we're going to have to write more. Like, Britain's already been doing it, but, like, a lot of comics have been coming out with specials hour, hour after hour, which will either kill the art form because art, the comedy doesn't, shouldn't work that way because it gets less and less good, or there's going to be a new format of this improv slash stand-up where it's, like, we work on being funny people who are adaptable situations and we're just <clears throat> thrown in ramblers, different. you know, as yeah. opposed to straight polished bits. I feel like that may be going that direction, but I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, as a, I'm a, like a really, well, the, it comes with the weed, but studying a lot of like future technology and where we're going, like there is, um, this is the first summer where hologram entertainment technology is going to be hitting the road and people are going to be watching people who are dead perform live via hologram. Mm -hmm. It has not existed. We're like maybe a decade to 12 to 15 years away where you're gonna have that in a tabletop at your house 
where you're going to be able to use a device to pay for online content. And guess what? Seton Smith is going to show up in your family room as a hologram doing his new special or any special that he's ever Man. done. That's oh. where that's where entertainment. Oh, that's going to be creepy. <laughs> Getting me way crazy. Oh, so you gotta crazy. understand, like, do you, dude, computers are getting smaller. They're getting faster. They're becoming real time. Like, art, the art is going to reflect it. I mean, yeah. that's what's going to happen. No, nah, that's gonna add too much intimacy. Cause, like, I'm not. <laughs> They'll be I, able to pick what you're wearing. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, when they see you so on you the when they see you on the street, man, they are gonna feel real comfortable with you. That's yeah. the real. Be, that's the part yeah. that bothers me. Like. Like, I was just looking online at this clip of Busta Rhymes. Like, he was just walking to his bus, and these fans were yelling, like, a couple of fans, like, hey, Busta Rhymes. He was like, hold on, I got to go in the, the bus. And she was like, he's so ignorant. <laughs> oh, my God. And then he stopped. He was like, what the fuck did you just say to me? I got to take a shit? And you telling me, because yeah. I got to take a shit, I, and I don't speak to you? I gotta, I'm a fucking ignorant? Is that what you're saying? She was like, excuse me, there are kids around. <laughs> hey, hold oh, on. Man. And I was just like, yeah, people, I'm mm. not, listen, I'm not, I like fans and all, but I'm just like that, that level of like, I realized. And this, I'm, I, and the show's been on a little bit, and I just found this in a little small sliver. I'm not saying I'm famous at all. I'm just saying that the few instances I've had, I've noticed that my time is in my own when somebody recognizes me. It's like, no, you need to come here because I know you, and I'm a fan, mm -hmm. so I demand. Like, I'm a, like they're a fucking customer, and they're right. <laughs> and I was just like, but no, I'm, 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 on, I'm on a subway right now going somewhere else. <laughs> I don't have time for you. And they're like, no, 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 uh, excuse me. That's all, I don't know. Um, I feel like if it's a hologram, it'll be a lot worse. Cause then it's like, nigga, you were in my house. You're right here. Finish what you were saying before my. I don't know who you are. <laughs> you guys are so engaged with your audiences all the time now, with podcasts, with just being available on the internet all the time. So do you think it's become worse? I mean, you. Have well, a no, I think it's going better actually. Really? Because uh, back in the '50s, it was like magic. Art was, uh, our job was, now our job's not magic anymore. Because there's so much access, okay, right. they, everybody kind of has an awareness of, oh, I don't want to bother the star. You know, everybody thinks that now. So that's, uh, but I'm not famous. So when you're not famous, though, nigga, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you're some nigga on the show. Just talk to me. You ain't doing nothing. <laughs> well, I, I remember. I saw you in a commercial, nigga. You ain't nobody here. So sit down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're well aware of the fact that yeah. this guy's almost to something. Well, yeah. I remember last week Nick talked about it. Nick DiPaolo yeah. talked about how there was, like, an expectation for, like, after the show, you're supposed to mingle after the show. And he was just like, fuck that. Like, you, you used to get paid extra to do that after the show. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like. It's almost expected of the artist now to be mm -hmm. like, you have to go out there now and be part of it. I mean, I don't know what do you guys. How do you feel about that? I mean, there's a first. there. I mean, I, I've heard you know the there's an older school mentality that says they don't see you until you appear on stage, mm -hmm. and then they don't see you again so, until you appear on stage, stage again. again. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. guys who have the ability to. They're going to get dropped off right at the back stairs, and they're going to be walking up the back stairs as they get introduced. Right. And, the, and when the and then they're gonna land right where they need to be, right at the time right they need time, to be. They're gonna do they, their work and they're and gonna they're bounce. Out. Yeah. You know, but I mean, I think is that, that just a status of reaching no, a certain I mean, level, I think, I think or is that, it just a mentality? I think it's probably a it's probably it's probably a reflection of the time that they came up and were groomed mm -hmm. as artists, and then, and that's what that's what was done. Yeah. Yeah, I know young comics who do that too. I mean, young headliners who do that too. I, it's it's hard. <laughs> it's like what if, if you? I mean, especially for my style, I find that if I'm, I'm I put so much energy out. Each hour that after I get off stage, I need You're done. I need a minute. Yeah. I need a minute yeah. to just re yeah. recuperate. I, yeah. Anything you ask me, I'm just be like, yeah, that sounds. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm done. I need like I need I need Red Bull. I need to like get my yeah. my, my mind back together. Yeah. I'm not. I can't give you more. And then I gave you. I gave you everything up there. Yeah. I, why, why do you need more than that? I've told you everything about me. There's yeah. nothing. There's no secrets. <laughs> I like that, man. That's, that's good, man. It's just like music. I mean, you just leave it all on stage and you get it out. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I have to stand and talk to everybody. Most of it's about apologizing. Mm, <laughs> I'm <terrible>. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about everything that just happened. <laughs> I'll get your money back. <laughs> I'd rather hide than apologize. I'd be like, you know what? Man, let's make them think they thought I was supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the mystique of it. Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, where are we at in time, man? Is that about 45 hours? Yeah. 40, that's 90 minutes. Yeah, there we go. Ten. Cool. Is it been, oh, it's only been an hour and 10? Oh, yeah. shit. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank Seriously. You. Thank you. This was, this was fun. So this was, a, this was a different one. I liked it. I like where it, it went, man. I like where it was going. Definitely so. the most unique podcast we've done so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, hate, like, I hate talking about my life. It's fucking stupid. Where are you from? I don't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't thought about that in so long. I left it. That's why I fucking don't talk about it, because yeah. I left it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, thank you, gentlemen. Seriously. Thanks, Thanks awesome. man. Yeah, cool. Appreciate it. Yep. Check right. out everybody out on uh, their Twitters. Uh, well, do we have yeah. the, you guys have the Twitters? At Seton Smith, at John Toll. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Beautiful. Man.